Hello everyone. Today I have with me problem 3.14, the champion jumper of the insect world. The frog hopper holds the world record for insect jumps when leaping at an angle of 58 degrees above the horizontal. Some of the tiny critters have reached a maximum height of 58.7 meter, centimeters above the level ground. A, what was the takeoff speed for such a leap? And B, what horizontal distance did the frog hopper cover for this world record leap? Okay, so as per usual, let's get started on our, on our diagram. So we have right over here, um, let's say this is the point where the frog hopper starts to jump. And it's going to jump at an angle of 58 degrees above the horizontal. And it's going to reach a maximum height of, well, actually, because it's 58 degrees, we know that this is going to be some sort of projectile. There we go. And it's going to be symmetrical, even though this picture isn't, but just imagine that I drew it symmetrical. And right over here, we have our maximum height, which happens in the middle, and that's going to be 58.7 centimeters or 0 0.587 meters, if you want to convert that right now. Okay, so we want to find out what the takeoff speed is and what the horizontal distance this frog hopper travels. And so to solve all of that, what we can do is we can just start by writing uh, all of our knowns. So because this is projectile motion, we can break our movement down into three different parts, really. So we can say that this frog is going to jump up. And once it reaches a maximum height, it's going to, before it's going to change direction. So it's gonna have a Y component, which is going to be up and down, right? And before it changes direction, right, to go back down, it's going to start at, you know, whatever, some starting speed, let's say like, you know, um, I don't know, 120, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's some sort of starting speed. And then gravity is going to actually, you know, slow it down um, because, you know, um, it's working in the opposite direction. And once it reaches some maximum height, it's going to want to go with gravity down. But before it changes direction, it's going to actually be at zero meters per second at the top. So our what we can do is if we actually write all of our knowns for this right over here, we can use symmetry. We can exploit symmetry to find out what our time is um, or like, you know, wh whatever details there are that we want to figure out, we can use symmetry to figure that out. And while that sounds really um, kind of abstract right now, when I do the actual question, I'll point out exactly how we're going to use symmetry. But another part is that we're not just going up and down right? We're also going some sort of horizontal distance. And this is going to be x. So let's just write down our knowns. So for y, we have our vi, which is actually what we're trying to figure out. So for our vi, we have vi sine 58. Because we know that right over here, we can break this down into vi we can do vi y and then we can do vi x. So we have vi sine 58. And then for our acceleration, we can do negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we have our you know distance, which um, we said we're only going to be doing you know one uh, you know one direction just up, and then we're going to do down afterwards. But we're just going from here to here. So that's going to be 0 0.587 meters. And then we have our VFY. So we said that at the top, it's going to be 0 meters per second. And then we do also don't know what our time is. OK. And then for x, um, recall that in projectile motion, we only have like a, a very simple speed equation. So it's just going to be dx. And then we don't know what that is. That's actually what we're trying to find out in part B. And then we have our vix, right? So this is viy, this is ay, dy. And vix is going to be equal to vi cos 58. So this component right over here. Okay. And then our time. 
our time is going to be the exact same time because remember that whatever is in the air is only going to travel as far in the x direction as long as it is in the air right so if this takes one second then we're only going to travel in the x direction for one second for what using whatever speed that we're traveling at um it doesn't make logical sense that you're only in the air for what like two seconds but then you're traveling in the x direction for five seconds no that doesn't make sense so it's going to be these the time in the y is equal to the time in the x and that's only how far the x is going to travel Okay, so what we wanted to find out was what is the takeoff speed for such a leap? And to do that, we have to use our one of our five kinematic equations. So the one that actually has all four things that we want, it's going to be Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2ad. And that's going to be zero is equal to Vi sine 58 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times 0 0.587 and then our vi is just going to be 3.99 meters per second so that's just our speed right or actually sorry if i plug that in i'm getting like just to be a little bit more precise 3.9997 is what i'm getting meters per second Okay, so that's our takeoff speed. What is the horizontal distance uh, did the frog hopper cover? What horizontal distance did the frog hopper cover? So remember that to get the horizontal distance, all we need to do is dx is equal to vix times t. And we have our vi, which is, you know, 3.9997. And we're just trying to find our t. So our t if we figure out our t and y, we can just use that to get our t and x. And to do that, there's actually two ways. So really, we just have to use one of the five kinematic equations. And that means we have two options. So if we want to use everything that's known to prevent any sort of you know error, the equation that you want to use is this. d is equal to vf t minus a half of a t squared. So that's going to be our equation. But the problem I have with this is just there's a quadratic in it. And one, I'm lazy, uh, too lazy to solve quadratics. And two, I just feel like if this were a test or if this is some sort of, um, you know, timed situation, it's so much easier to make mistakes when solving a quadratic if you don't have like um, a quadratic, uh, like a, a calculator that can solve it for you or if you are going to use um, or if you have access to an online calculator, that's fine too. But then just solving it on a text using like negative b plus minus, you know, um, root of um, b minus 4ac squared, uh, 4ac over, you know, 2a. That just, it's, you know, even I can't even say the equation right without, um, uh, what's it called? just thinking about it right so i just i don't like using the quadratic equation um but you can i'll just write it down here for you sorry oh yeah minus 4ac i'm pretty sure that's what it is i'm just gonna double check so i don't don't give you wrong information sorry yeah it's been so long yeah this is the right equation if you want to solve for you know your x or your t whatever, or in this, in this situation, it's just your T, but I don't like using that. Um, but the, the method that I actually like using is the equation that goes like this. It's VF is equal to VI plus AT. It's so much easier, so much cleaner. And we just have to isolate for T. We have our VF, we have our um, VI, and then we have our acceleration. And when I plug everything in, I'm just getting T is equal to 0 0.346115, right? And sorry, just to be, I like to, you know, do voice step by step. I don't want to skip anything. So this is really just what we would do to solve for that. So if you plug in all these values, you should end up with this time. But remember, we said that we're just doing from here all the way to the top we still have to account for the grasshopper reaching the top and going back all the way down. So really it's gonna, it's gonna be t times two, 
which is equal to zero point, sorry, I have to write that down. I don't have that in my notes. Um, it's going to be 0.346115 times two, and that's equal to 0 0.69223 seconds. And now that we have our VI, so we have our time now and we have our VIX, we just have to solve for our distance. So it's going to be 3.9997 um, cos 58 times 0 0.69223. And I'm getting 1.464 meters. That's our distance traveled in the horizontal. So yeah, that's our solution. So we have our takeoff speed, which is 3.997 meters per second. Um, and then we have our horizontal distance covered, which is 1.464 meters. Um, I hope that was helpful. And um, if you have any questions, um, as usual, please feel free to send me an email or leave um, your question in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as I can. And um, if this is helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you can. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.